These kinds of things are important for your future and your children's future, your grandchildren's future. Shelley Boyd has spent most of her life advocating for the Sinaixt and is the language and culture teacher in Inchalam. Almost all the kids who go here are Sinaixt. Even though they live only an hour away from the Canadian border, most of them have never been on their traditional territory. Boyd says Inchalem is located in one of the poorest counties in Washington, and crossing the border isn't always so simple. They found gold in Republic, and then we got pushed. Now we're down here. So we're not on our traditional territory anymore. For a lot of these students, this is the first time they're hearing about the Columbia River Treaty, and they don't understand why they're being left out. So I think we shouldn't be recognized as just Americans if we come from Canadian land as well. We should also get like kind of like a big say in it too, because like it was ours to begin with. The Columbia River Treaty is being renegotiated right now. The government of BC says it can't bring the Sinaiks to the negotiating table because the Coville Confederated Tribes represents the Sinaiks and are already engaged with U.S. negotiators. BC says bringing the Sinaiks in could jeopardize Canada's negotiating position and place the Sinaiks in a conflict of interest. It doesn't make any sense. The United States would never do anything with land in Canada, and that's where our territory is. So how would the United States represent us in Canada? As long as our cultural memory goes, the headwaters of the Columbia, all the way down to Kettle Falls, that's where our home is. And so, I mean, that's how important it is. I don't think there's, we can distinguish Sinaik separate from the Columbia River. Stevie Seymour is Sinaixt, and she is dedicated to revitalizing her culture. She says now is the time for Canada to right historic wrongs against the Sinaixt, while the Columbia River Treaty is being renegotiated. Canada talks about truth and reconciliation while sweeping us under the rug, um, and it's over and over again. 80% of the Sinaix traditional territory is in Canada, covering the main stem of the Columbia River. In the 1880s, when the Indian agent first came through Sinaix land, he missed them, which meant, in part, no reserve was set up. As a result, Sinaix were displaced across their territory and hundreds moved into the U.S. Oats got their reserve was established on the western shore of Arrow Lakes in 1902, only 26 people moved there, and it's now underwater. The last registered person on the reserve, Annie Joseph, died in 1953. Three years later, Canada and the U.S. started formal discussions that would become the Columbia River Treaty. Canada was already clearing land in the interior of B.C. to flood it. The treaty's purpose was for year-round electricity and flood control, with a series of dams and reservoirs. That same year, Canada declared the Sinaixt extinct. Many historians and Sinaixt say this isn't a coincidence. We have been removed from the landscape of Canada. That is a complete genocide. The treaty was signed in 1961 and ratified three years later. The treaty we pro proclaim will lay a new foundation of prosperity for Canadians and Americans for your West and for ours. The U.S. paid Canada just over $64 million to control floods for 60 years. But come September 2024, that agreement expires, leaving either side open to make changes to the treaty or even terminate it. For the last 10 years, talks have been underway about these renegotiations, and Canada has been consulting with the Tanaha, Sequetmec, and Silk Okanagan nations, but not the Sinaixt. Nothing's happening. Instead, they're working to make sure that we're not included, that in 2024 this is signed without one Sinaixt voice saying anything. The Sinaiks moved near Kettle Falls, Washington, but when gold was found there, they were forced to move again to Inchalum, nowhere near their traditional territory. Our home isn't a country. Our home is the Columbia River. 
In 2021, the Supreme Court of Canada ruled the Sinaixt is an Aboriginal people of Canada and were, in fact, not extinct. It meant that the Sinaixt is entitled to exercise Section 35 of the Constitution. Section 35 recognizes and affirms the rights of Indigenous peoples, which includes the duty to consult. They're acting like we don't exist, but... The courts have said we do. The courts have confirmed we're Aboriginal people of Canada. What does that mean? It's hard to know how much the Koval tribes are getting in the U.S. The State Department confirmed the tribe members signed non-disclosure agreements to ensure confidentiality of the negotiations. The chairman of the Koval Confederated Tribes confirmed with CBC that Canada has not reached out to them about the negotiations. The B.C. government acknowledges the Columbia River Treaty caused harm to First Nations. Its website talks about the damage flooding caused to First Nations, land, fish, habitat, and artifacts, but doesn't say which First Nations it's referring to. The surest sign I have of how significant this is, is that the Canadian government and the BC government have relentlessly refused to allow the Sinaiks to be at the negotiating table. And I think that's the first clue that we're sitting on a, a, a really powerful moment here. Eileen Delahanty Perks has written books on the Columbia River Treaty and the Sinaixt. She has reviewed documents that prove the BC government knowingly flooded land with Sinaixt graves, and that 90% of archaeological sites in the Arrow Lakes were destroyed. Perks says there was a huge rush to build these dams because the U.S. offered Canada bonuses if they completed early. It was just greed in the end that caused them to look away and allow these cultural sites to be flooded without preservation. The river is essentially liquid gold. The treaty between the U.S. and Canada is there to ensure that every drop of water is being managed. In hydropower alone, the Columbia generates billions of dollars. It provides nearly 50% of BC's power and 40% of all U.S. hydroelectric power. There's something very powerful going on when you take an extremely rich hydropower system worth billions of dollars and you expose a truth about the lack of ethics and the lack of truth in that process. One other aspect in the renegotiations is the salmon. The fish have huge cultural significance to First Nations and tribes all along the river. Large dams in the U.S. have blocked salmon from accessing 40% of their natural habitat. Restoring the salmon to the Upper Columbia and repairing the ecosystem is a priority for D.R. Michelle. Let's start to do those things we need to do to uh, correct some of those historic wrongs and make this a better place for all of us, those future generations, for the benefit of all. Recently, the Biden administration made a commitment, more than $200 million over 20 years to the Upper Columbia tribes to reintroduce salmon to the river. Michelle says his grandparents were the last people in his family to see salmon at Kettle Falls. If done right, future generations will see salmon return to the river. We can have hydro production, we can have flood risk management, we can have our fish back. Uh, we can afford to do all of that. It doesn't, it doesn't have to be a, a fight over. Unless Canada opens the door, and because of the Dizital decision, the Sinaixt only recourse may be legal action. They have all of the same legal tools available to um, kind of force the government to the table that a group situated in Canada would. And that's the key takeaway. There's no higher legal bar for a group in the United States than there is in Canada. But when the duty to consult applies in an international treaty is tricky. According to Brown, the courts haven't resolved if the government has a duty to consult during the negotiating phase. He says that may be purely a political matter and not for the courts to decide. Even if it's legally unclear whether or not the government has to do it, there's nothing stopping the government from consulting from engaging nations in the negotiation table if they think it's a good idea to do. 
When the new treaty is implemented into Canadian law, this would likely be the phase where the duty to consult is triggered. For Seymour, though, she says the Sinaiqs should be consulted now. Ideally, what would happen is Canada and the other tribes would say, hey, you know what, you have been blocked. You, ha you have been wronged here. And welcome to the table. Negotiations will end in a matter of months. Who is to benefit and how the power of the Columbia will be harnessed for the next several decades is still to be decided. Jackie McKay for CBC Indigenous in Washington State.